what if the most important part of color theory isn't about color at all? When I started painting, I made the exact same mistake that pretty much everyone who has ever touched a brush does. I used way too bright colors right at the start. If this is something you recognize in your art, don't worry. It's not a permanent condition and as you paint more, you will be able to get over it, basically. Just being aware of it will make that process happen a lot faster for you than it happened for me. When choosing a color, it's often very hard to resist those fun candy hues at the top of the saturation range. But today we're looking at those unappealing whole grain vegan hues at the lower end of the saturation gradient. First of all, why? And also, do I have to? Let me explain you first why I and everyone else makes this choice, at least first when they start to paint. Your eye in any picture is automatically, unconsciously guided towards the areas of the picture that has high saturation in it. This is how our ancestors were able to identify edible fruit, see danger and navigate the rough terrain. It's survival instinct. When you open a palette that has this view, the most appealing part for your eye is right here. I mean, if all of these were pieces of candy, you'd probably want to eat this swatch. Sidebar, if you're finished, you'd probably go for the licorice color swatch instead, but forget that now, because this is a strictly low-carb video tutorial. The most important book when it comes to color theory is Johannes Itten's Art of Color. In this book, Itten explains a theory of human eye seeking balance. Basically, your eye is adjusting the importance of every color it sees at the same time. I'm using only yellows and oranges in this painting. There is no need to use any blue or purple because just desaturated gray versions of those colors will do. I mean, by those colors, the oranges and yellows. Why is this? Because your eyes seek balance. And if they cannot find it, your brain is going to adjust what, what information it's given to have balance in the picture regardless. There's another reason too, and this is what I'm using to push the mood of this painting. Your mind also bundles entire concepts with colors associated with them. Hearts are red, grass is green, clouds are white, and water is blue. When you see desaturated grey hues in objects that you recognize to be one of these symbols, you immediately color it in your head with the symbol color attached to it. There is no green in the grass of this painting, only warm yellows. This guy in the foreground, for example, his shirt is bright orange, but his jeans are orange too. Do your eyes see them as blue? That is because your eye wants to see balance and it wants to see that complementary color to balance this bright orange color with it. Using these tricks, you can fully commit to the mood of your painting and not confuse the eye with too many different hues. I recommend taking a look at the analogous colors video and use this knowledge of your grays so that you can work with an expanded toolset when you have analogous colors in your picture. If you are using, for example, just blue and green, and that's an analogous color scheme, if you use only bright blues and bright greens, you quickly run out of tools to use. But if you look at the full saturation range as well, then you can pretty much create whatever color you want with just the illusion of more colors. Also, don't feel like you need to have 100% desaturated gray color for this trick to work. If you look at the sky, for example, it's not dark gray, it's orange. You just need to surround the hue with the complementary color that has enough saturation to make this illusion happen. So to recap, the most important parts of this video is that when you put desaturated colors in your painting, be aware that they will optically start looking like the complementary colors that you are surrounding them with. Also, colors are sometimes attached to symbols, like for example, grass will appear easily green if it's done with colors that are close to it, 
people's brains will just want to push it towards that direction that they will understand easier. If you look at a lot of my paintings, I have actually painted grass blue because I know that it's close enough and people will jump to the right color. But I do this to just push the mood of the paintings by using this association that people have with that surface. And finally, you need grace because you can't have every part of your painting be the most important part. When you have high saturation in your image, your eye is automatically targeting those areas. So you want to be mindful of where you place those high saturation colors and make sure that those areas are the places that you want your viewer to be looking at. There's my tips for using gray. I hope you found this video useful. Subscribe for more videos on how to use color and to paint and creativity in general. I'm Nikko and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!